okay guys welcome to engineers academy uh, kindly subscribe my channel engineers academy if you are here for the first time now we are going to solve these two problems which are related to this figure so 350 problem says that determine the force in each cable if this force f is 500 pounds and in the second problem it is said that determine the greatest force f that can be applied to the ring if each cable can support a maximum force of 800 pound so these two problems are solved by finding the cartesian vector representation of each and every tension in these three cables and then applying the uh, since this ring is in equilibrium so we will apply the summation of forces along x equals to zero the summation of forces along y equals to zero and the summation of forces along z equals to zero since the system is in equilibrium so once we apply these three conditions we will get three equations and then we will find uh, we would determine the force in each cable if f is equal to 500 pounds and we will then we will be able to solve this 351 problem so first i am going to solve this 350 problem so if we draw the free body diagram if we uh, cut these ropes so we will have the tension in AB cable which will be acting in this direction the tension in cable AB will be acting in this direction and let's say that the magnitude of that tension is let's say T1 similarly uh, the tension in this AC cable is let's say the magnitude of that tension is let's say T2 and let's say that the tension in this uh, AD cable is let's say T3 and this force F is acting in the upward direction so to find the summation of uh, the components of T1, T2, T3 along the x, y and z axis, we have to find the Cartesian vector representation of T1, T2 and T3. So now as we know that T1 vector, this will be equal to its magnitude times the unit vector from A to B since T1 is acting from A to B. So the unit vector from A to B. And now as we know that the unit vector from A to B, this is T1, the unit vector from A to B is the position vector from A to B divided by its magnitude. So the magnitude of the position vector from A to B. So this is T1 and to find the position vector from A to B, we have to, we need to move from A along the x, y and z axis to reach that point B. So to reach that point B from A, we need to move 6 feet in the negative z direction or in the negative k direction. So I will write minus 6k. Then uh, from here, I need to move uh, 3 feet in the positive x direction. So that is in the positive i direction. So I will write plus 3i and then we need to move two feet distance so this distance is two feet and this is in the negative y direction so that is in the negative j so i will write minus two j so this is the position vector from a to b and then we have to find its magnitude so its magnitude would be three square plus two square plus six square the square of the magnitude of each component and then we will take the square root so this will give us the magnitude is uh, 3 square is 9, 2 square is 4 and 6 square is 36 so this gives us 7 so the magnitude of that position vector from A to B this is 7 so this is T1 from A to B so we can write that the if, if I divide each and every component of the position vector by this 7 so we will have T1 3 divided by 7 I minus 2 divided by 7 j minus 6 divided by 7 k and if i multiply this t1 then we will have 3 divided by 7 t1 i minus 2 divided by 7 t1 j and 6 divided by 7 t1 k so this is the cartesian vector uh, t1 right so we can write that this is that t1 vector Similarly, we can find T2, then again uh, T2 vector, this is equal to, so again T2 magnitude multiplied by the unit vector from uh, A to C, since T2 is acting from A to C, this is the unit vector from A to C and then this is T2 
and to find the unit vector from A to C we need to move from A to along the x, y and z axis to reach that point C. So to reach that point C again we need to move uh, 6 feet downward in the negative z direction so I will write minus 6k and then once I reach here then I need to move this distance this is in the uh, negative x direction and this distance is 3 feet this is 2 plus 1 so this is 3 feet so 3 feet in the negative x so I will write minus 3i and then we need to move this distance which is 1 feet in the uh, negative y direction so I will write minus 1j and now its magnitude will be this 3 square plus 1 square plus 6 square under the square root so this gives us uh, 3 square is 9 plus 1 square is 1 and 6 square is 36. So this gives us square root 46. So this is square root. And now if we divide each component by this magnitude and multiply by T2, so we will have Cartesian vector representation of T2. So T2 vector, this is equal to minus 3 divided by square root 46 into t2 and this is in the i then minus 1 divided by square root 46 t2 in the j and then minus 6 divided by square root 46 t2 in the k direction. Similarly, uh, Cartesian vector representation of the T3 so T3 this is equal to T3 magnitude multiply by the position the unit vector from A to D then this is T3 and again to find the position vector from A to B we need to move from A to reach that point D along the X Y and Z axis so again we need to move 6 feet in the negative K so I will write minus 6 K then we need to move this distance uh, sorry this distance so this distance is 3 feet in the positive y so I will write plus 3j and then we need to move this distance this is 2 feet in the negative i direction so I will write minus 2i and then its magnitude is 2 square plus 3 square plus 6 square under the square root and again this will give us 7 right so this is uh, 2 square plus 3 square plus 6 square this gives us 7 so this is 7 and from this we can write that t3 vector this is equal to this minus 2 divided by 7 t3 this t3 is multiplied with each component so this is minus 2 divided by 7 t3 i plus 3 divided by 7 this 3 divided by 7 t3 j minus 6 divided by 7 t3 k and similarly that force f is acting in the positive z direction so we can write that Cartesian vector representation of that force f is its magnitude multiplied by the unit vector uh, along this force f so this force magnitude and the unit vector is along the positive k direction so I will multiply it with k. So this is the Cartesian vector representation of the force f. Now if we apply the summation of forces along the x axis so that will be equal to 0. So we have to add up the x components of t1, t2, t3 and this force f. So this force f is only acting in the k direction so it's i component is 0, its j component is 0 and its k component it has a magnitude of this f. So now if we add up the x component, so this is 3 divided by 7 t1 plus this, this is minus 3 divided by square root 46 t2 and then this, this is minus 2 divided by 7 t3 and this is 0 so this will be equal to 0. Similarly uh, we have that summation of forces along the y axis is equal to 0. So the summation of forces along y axis is 
So we have to add up all the j components. So this is minus 2 divided by 7, minus 2 divided by 7 t1, then this uh, minus 1 divided by square root 46 t2, then this plus 3 divided by 7 t3, and this will be equal to 0 since the j component of that force f is 0. Similarly, if we apply the uh, summation of forces along the z axis is equals to 0. So, we will have the equation we need to add up all the k components. So, this is minus 6 divided by 7 t1 and then this uh, minus 6 divided by square root 46 t2 and then this minus 6 divided by 7 t3 and then this, this is plus f. So, this is equal to 0. So, now we have three equations and three unknowns. In the 350 problem, the force f is given. So, when force f is equal to uh, equal to 500 pounds, we need to find t1, t2 and t3. So, this is equal to 500 pounds for the first problem, right? So now we need to solve these three equations simultaneously. So first of all, I will solve these two equations. So let's say if I multiply uh, this equation 1 by 2. So we will have uh, 6 divided by 7 t1 minus 6 divided by square root 46 t2 and minus uh, 4 divided by 7 t3 and this will be equal to 0. So, we have this equation, right? And similarly, if I multiply this uh, equation 2 with 3, if we multiply this whole equation by 3, so we will have, this will give us minus 3 divided by 7 t1 minus this 3 divided by square root 46 t2 plus 3 into 3, so that will give us 9 divided by 7 t3 and this is equal to 0. And now if I if I add this equation and this equation, so, so this is this is 3 into 2, so this is 6, right? This is minus 6 divided by 7 t1 and this is 3 divided by square root 4 6 and this is 9. Now if I add this equation and this equation, both the purple equations, right? So this is plus 6 divided by 7 t1 minus 6 divided by square root 46 t2 minus 4 divided by 7 t3 and if we add up uh, both of these equations so this will cancel out since this is minus 6 divided by 7 t1 this is plus 6 divided by 7 these two will add up so if we add up both of these uh, so this gives us minus 9 divided by square root 46 t2 and this is uh, if we add up both of these so that will give us uh, 9 divided by 7 minus 4 divided by 7 so this is 7 and 9 as minus 4 is 5 so this is plus 5 divided by 7 t3 and this is equal to 0 and if I bring this t3 to the other side of equation so that will be minus 5 divided by 7 t3 and if I cross multiply uh, both of these equation by the inverse of this and minus will cancel out, right? This will cancel out. This minus will cancel out and we can say that T2 is equal to 5 divided by 7 multiplied by square root 46 divided by 9 into T3. So, this is T2 in terms of T3. Now, if I put uh, this T2 in terms of T3 and uh, in this equation, let's say this is summation of forces along x. So, let me write this. So, this is 5 square root 46. The equation is like this. So, now if I put this in that equation, so we will have T1 in terms of T3. So, the summation of forces along x equations and the so summation of forces along x equation equals to 0. So, that is 3 divided by 7 T1 minus 3 divided by square root 46 into t2. Now, we need to write t2 in terms of t3. So, that is 5 divided by 7 
square root 46 divided by 9 into t3 and then minus 2 divided by 7 t3 and this is equal to 0. So now if we multiply this, so this will cancel out and this will be 3 into 3. So we can write this equation as 3 divided by 7 t1 minus 5 and this is 7 into 3. So this is 21 or we can write this as 7 into 3 t3 minus 2 divided by 7 t3 and this is equal to 0. So now if we add up both of these, so that is uh, 5 divided minus 5 divided by 7 into 3 and minus 2 divided by 7. So we need to write the LCM as 7 into 3. So that is minus 5 and this is, uh, this is 3 into 2 is 6. So this is minus 11 divided by 7 into 321. So now if we add up both of these, so this equation is, this is equal to 3 divided by 7 t1 minus 11 divided by 21 t3 and this is equal to 0 and from this uh, we can write that t1 3 divided by 7 t1 this is equal to 11 divided by 21 t3 and if we cross multiply this with 7 divided by 3 so this is 7 divided by 3. So T1 is equal to T1 is equal to this is 77 divided by 21 into 3. So that is uh, 3 into 1 is 3 and 3 into 2 is 63 T3. So this is 77 by 63 and if we 77 divided by 63 this gives us 11 by 9. So we can write that T1 is 11 divided by 9 T3. So this is T1 in terms of T3. This is T1 in terms of T3 and similarly we can simplify this. This is T2 is 5 into square root 46 divided by 7 into 9. So we cannot simplify it. So let me write this as uh, t2 equals to t2 equals to 0 0.538 t3. This is t2 in terms of t3. And this is 11 divided by 9, 11 divided by 9, this gives us 1.222, this is 1.222 T3. And now uh, if I put this T1 and T2 in this summation of forces along Z, this third equation, so we will get uh, T3 in terms of that force F. So this third equation is the summation of forces along Z. So that is minus 6 divided by 7 T1. And T1 is 1.222 T3. Similarly, uh, minus 6, let me write this is like this, minus 222 T3. Minus 6 divided by square root 46 and uh, T2 is this, 0 0.538. 0 0.538 T3 minus this 6 divided by 7 T3 and plus F this is equal to 0. So now we, we need to take T3 common from these three terms and then we need to add up. So that is like this. So this is uh, minus 6 into 1.22 2 divided by 7 minus 6 into 0 0.538 divided by square root 46 and then minus 6 divided by 7 and this gives us minus 2.381 let's see minus 2.381 t3 plus f equals to 0 and if I bring this f to the other side of equation so it will become minus f 
and minus f will cancel out. So we can write that T3 is equal to the force F divided by 2.381. So this, the, we have these three very important equations. The, when we have these three equations, we can solve both of these problems, that is 350 and 351. So now first let me write these equations. This is T1 equals to 1.222 T3 and T2 equals to this 0 0.5338, is 0 0.538 T3 and then T3 is equal to this F divided by, this F divided by 2.381. Now if we look into those problem statements, this is the problem statements, let me copy it there, right? So this is, so now this is our problem statement and the problem statement says that determine the force F in each cable if F is equal to 500 pounds. So for 350, the force F is given which is 500 pounds. So now this is very simple, we have these three equations so if I put F equals to 500 pounds in this equation, we will be able to find T3. So T3 will be 500 divided by 2.381. So 500 divided by 2.381. This gives us 209.99, so it is approximately 210, 210 pounds. This is T3. And now if we know T3, we can find T1. So T1 is 1.222 into T3, which is 210. So 210 multiply by 1.222. So that gives us 256.62. So T1 is 256.62 pounds. And similarly, we can find T2. So T2 is 0 0.538 into T3, T3 is 210, so 0 0.538, 0 0.538 multiplied by 210, so that gives us 111.98 or we can say that it is approximately 113, so 113 pounds, this is T2. So for 350 problem, the tension in the cable AB, this is our T1, this is T1, this is T2, and this is T3. So the tension in AB cable is 256.62, then the tension in this AC cable is 113 pounds, and then the tension in that AD cable is 210 pounds. So this was required in 350 problems. Now in 351, it is said that determine the greatest force F. Now the force F is unknown. We have to find F max or the F greatest. And that can be applied to the ring if each cable can support a maximum force F of 800 pound. So now let me write this T1, T2, T3 in terms of that force F. So now we know that T1 is 1.222 T3 and T3 is this. So instead of T3, I will write that F divided by 2.381. So 1.222 divided by 2.381, this gives us 0 0.513 F. So this T1 is 0 0.513 F. So now this T1 is in terms of uh, that force F. Similarly T2, so T2 is 0 0.538 T3 and now again T3 in terms of F is F divided by 2.381. So this is T2. So T2 is 0 0.538 divided by 2.381. This gives us 0 
0.226F and similarly we know that T3 is this is 1 divided by 2.381 so 1 divided by 2.381 this gives us 0 0.419 0 0.419F this is T3 in terms of F so now if let's say if we assume that force F is 1 pound then if I put F1 in these three equations then we can say that T1 is the greatest the tension in AB cable is the maximum right that is 0 0.513 if F is equal to 1 pound so from this we can conclude that the AB cable is under maximum tension so since in 351 problem it is said that the maximum uh, tension that can be supported uh, by each cable cannot be greater than 800 pounds so we assume that let's assume that since the tension in this AB cable is maximum so we assume that T1 is equal to 800 pounds so that will give us the maximum uh, force F that can be applied so if T1 is equal to uh, 800 pounds we can use this equation to find that force F so that is force F will be equal to T1 divided by 0 0.513 and T1 is 800 divided by 0 0.513 so 800 divided by 0 0.513 this gives us 1559 approximately so the maximum force that can be support that can be applied to the ring so that uh, each cable can support a maximum force so that is 15 59 pounds let me write this is 15 59 pounds now we can check or you people can check that whether uh, t2 and t3 they are less than that 800 pounds so this if this is the right answer so t2 and t3 must be less than that 800 pounds so if we find t2 so t2 is 0 0.226 into f so T2 is 0 0.226 into F. Now force F is, uh, we have determined that force F is uh, 100, uh, 1559. So I will multiply it with 1559 and this gives us T2, which is 352 and 352 is less than 800 pounds. And similarly, T3 is 0 0.419 into F. So 0 0.419 into F and again F is uh, 1559 that can be supported. 15. 59 so the the t3 is uh since t3 is 0 0.419 f so t3 is uh 653.221 again which is less than 800 pound so the maximum force that can be applied to the ring when each cable can support a maximum force of 800 pound uh, 800 pound force is this force f is 1559 so this is the solution of the second problem so to solve both of these problems you people need to uh, find these three equations which I have determined and then apply the conditions according to the problem statement so uh, that will give us these two answers. So I hope this will help you in problem. Uh, so I hope this will help you in, learn, in your learning. So I hope uh, this will help you in uh, your learning for solving the engineering statics problems from Hibla Statics. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Hibla Statics.